Hello and welcome to the fifth episode in our Build an App series. In this episode, we're going to take a look at extending Appium. While the Appium platform comes with a wealth of components, patterns and templates, we know that having the flexibility to extend our platform is valuable to our users. There's a number of ways of extending Appium, but today we're going to focus on leveraging component plugins to extend the design tools on offer to your users. So where do we start? Well, before jumping into Appium itself, I want to point you to our app market, part of our community site. And you can see there's a number of plugin submissions from our partners and our customers. And you can see we've got everything from AI plugins through to document management, a whole wealth of tools designed to make your life easier when it comes to building out applications for your users. Now today, I want to extend our record summary in the Office Relocation Request app to add a more visual component, a map of the route between the two office locations that we've specified. Now, helpfully, one's already been created and this particular plugin will add a new option into our interface designer. So like everything else, we can pretty much drag and drop that component into our interface. So before we can start, we need to first of all go and enable the plugin within our environment. And we do that within the admin console. And then we navigate into plugins and we're then presented with a list of plugins that are currently already installed within our environment. And it's always worth just checking if the plugin that you're looking for has already been deployed. So if we do a quick search for map, we can see that Google Maps has actually already been deployed in this particular instance. And you can see it's got a couple of different components, directions field, display field, and pin field. We're gonna be looking to use the maps direction field. But we can also quickly add new plugins from this menu as well. So if we do a search again for Google Map, we'll see that same system comes up, that same plugin component, sorry, comes up. You'll notice as well, there's a plugin called a connected system. So if you wanted to leverage the Google Maps APIs in order to pull information back about the route, you could set up a connected system as another type of plugin to be um, shown within your integrations menu. But for today, we're going to be leveraging that component plugin because we want to use the drag and drop capabilities in our interface designer. So if we jump over into our design view here and open up our office relocation request summary interface, if you remember from last time, we built out a number of record relationships. So not only have we got the core request information, we've also got related information that's been entered based on properties selected. So for the employee number that was selected, we've got all of the employee details. For the office Old Street address, we've got all of the details about that office, including, most helpfully, the longitude and latitude values for this office. And those are gonna be key for us to enable the route planning within Google Maps. Now, if we look in our components and do a search for maps, you can see that we've got Google Map Directions and Google Map Markers. And if we just take out the S, we've also got Google Map Pin. So that component plugin that we were searching for earlier will appear as a new option within your components tray. So let's drag in that Maps Direction component. And we're just gonna pop that within this column here, sat nicely under our office. And over on the right-hand side, if we just close a couple of these trays, what we'll then see is the component configuration will update for that new plugin that we've added. So we can now start to edit it just like we would with a built-in component such as a text box, a card, etc. So let's rename that simply to directions. We've got an error request denied because we need to put some sort of authentication in. Now, helpfully, it's just using a API key for Google Maps. So we can look up the value for that. I've got this stored within a constant. So if we just do a quick search for my Google Maps API key and plug that in, that should then clear that error. And we'll then just need to populate the start point and the end point for Google to then plot the route between. Now, helpfully, because we're using related records here, we've got all of the information about this particular office address stored within a local variable that was created automatically. So we can drill in here and we know that this particular variable is holding the value that we selected when we created this particular request. So when we selected um, 123 Main Street, Appian is then doing a query and storing the full details 
about that particular record within this local variable. So that makes it even easier for me to be able to pop this information into my Google Maps component. So if we come into the expression editor again, this time for origin, we can use our local variables like so. And we'll need to reference the record object that this is calling. So we just need to look up CDO office and then navigate to the field that we want to use. So we're gonna use latitude. And now you'll notice at the top, there's some little prompts telling us what we need to put in. So we need to format it as latitude, comma, longitude. So we just need to put an ampersand in there, a comma, and another ampersand. And we can then pop in the longitude value. So let's just copy that and select the longitude field, like so. And just for good measure, let's pop these in some curly braces and click OK. So just whilst that's refreshing, we're using those local variables to populate our start address. Our end address is stored slightly differently. So we'll then need to pop in a destination. So we can put in on the expression editor again, we could use the rule input at this point. So our rule input was record. And if we just jump through the fields, you can see we've then got that new office address. Now this particular one was just stored as a free text. So I'm just gonna add in a quick additional piece to make sure that it searches for the right street address. So the new office address, I think for this one was 130 New Street. We're just gonna put it into the city of New York just to help Google a little bit. So as we click OK, that will now call the plugin integration service to make sure that it's querying correctly. And you can see, there we go, it's got a start point, it's got an end point. It's probably showing not found because it was just taking a second to catch up. But we've now got those two offices mapped nice and neatly so that we can quickly see the distance between the two locations. And you'll notice that there's a whole wealth of configurable options on here. So we can specify things like travel mode, the arrival and departure time, uh, whether or not we want users to be able to zoom, to pan around, to enable street view, all of the great functionality that you would see on Google Maps in a web browser, you can bring in as part of your Appian interface for your end users. So if we hit save on that now, that will then be readily available within our site and ready to see. So let's go and check out how this looks to our end users. Here we are within our relocations site that you remember we created in an earlier episode. And let's just pick on the one that we were testing in. So request number two from 123 Main Street to 130 New Street. If we click into that and scroll down a little bit, there we go, there's our map. You'll notice that we can zoom in, we can move it around, we can switch into satellite mode. All of that great functionality of Google Maps readily available within our Appian application. And of course, we don't need to stop there. If we come back to our interface, obviously we can start to tidy this up. There's probably some information that we could take out such as the longitude and latitude values. We might wanna pull those out and maybe use those within the map markers themselves. So we'd be able to specify kind of like captions effectively um, to put additional configuration into the map markers so that we remove some of the clutter on this particular interface. Don't forget, it's worth checking out some of the other applications um, and the other plugins that are available on the Appian app market. As I say, these have been developed not just by Appian staff, but also by customers and partners. And some of them go beyond just simple functionality like integrating into an existing web service like Google Maps. Some of them call additional applications as well so that you can leverage the power of those third-party applications directly within your application. Don't forget to like and subscribe to be notified of new videos and we'll see you next time.